Energy media readers, hydrogen is becoming more and more a uh, topic of interest in Alberta. The uh, opportunity exists to create blue hydrogen from uh, natural gas and using carbon capture and storage versus green hydrogen, which is made using electrolysis with renewable energy. To, uh, to discuss this with us today, we've got Thomas Koch Blank from the Rocky Mountain Institute down in Boulder, Colorado. So welcome to the interview, Thomas. Thank you. Maybe if you could briefly describe the difference between blue hydrogen and green hydrogen. For sure. So hydrogen uh, is effectively a fuel so similar to other, to natural gas or gasoline that you could use for different end uses. Uh, so you could either put it in a car and use a fuel cell to, uh, to convert that hydrogen into electricity and use it to drive a car, but you can also use it for other Sector, sectors as well as in you know industrial applications. So that's that's the use side of hydrogen. But on the production side, there are also many ways of getting hydrogen to supply to the industries and the sectors. So hydrogen is one of the most abundant uh, materials we have, uh, and you can find it in water, but also in natural gas. Now, in terms of industrial scale production and sort of getting hydrogen sort of in a, in a pure and concentrated form so you can deliver it, you can either get it from water, uh, so that is done with the process called electro electrolysis, um, using electricity. Now, if that electricity is renewable, that is what is often referred to as green hydrogen. If that electricity is not renewable, but rather uh, powered by natural gas plants or coal plants, obviously it comes with some associated emissions. The other sources of hydrogen is uh, in, especially relevant for the U.S. as you mentioned is natural gas. So you can you can use natural gas as a raw material, and uh, you basically strip the hydrogen out, and um, that does lead to some emissions at the plant, but you can capture that. Um, and sequester it through carbon capture and storage. Now, I've interviewed a, a local expert in Alberta named uh, Maggie Hanna. She's a geologist, and uh, she is fond of saying that in Alberta, the reservoirs where they've taken out oil and gas uh, are great rock for trapping uh, uh, CO2 that's created during the creation of blue hydrogen. So, and she claims that when you do that, and uh, so you, then it's basically blue hydrogen is not as uh, low carbon as green hydrogen, but it's pretty darn close. Uh, is that the case in your experience? So I'm not a geologist and I'm not an expert in carbon capture, but based on my understanding, you get a capture rate of close to 80, 90% from adding carbon capture to a, um, to a if you like, a, a, a steam reform asset that produces hydrogen from methane. Now, I think, I think uh, to keep in mind is that um, there is a, a significant amount of uh, ramp up of capacity for carbon capture required and some, to some extent some technology proofing, if you like, to make sure that the technology indeed delivers 80, 90% capture and that the carbon uh, stays in the ground. But that's areas where experts like uh, uh, the, the individual you talk to can add more insight. So uh, how difficult is it to move into this steam reform uh, process uh, to make blue hydrogen? Is it, uh, are we talking about, you know, very capital intensive, long lead times to build plant? Do we need to build additional infrastructure? Or is this something that can be done fairly quickly? So the current market for hydrogen is already significant, right? You have, uh, you have hydrogen produced for industrial uses at scale using uh, methane, steam reform methane, um, in that process. So there is already capacity, uh, it's known technology, and the marginal scale up, if you like, to serve the early uses of hydrogen for non-traditional sectors. So when it expands in transportation or other use cases in industry, that marginal expansion of capacity should not be a constraint. 
you know, I, I, um, I see rather the constraint being on the carbon capture side rather than on the SMR side. Interesting. Um, so uh, how would we transport this? I assume by, by pipelines. And does that mean that as the demand for oil declines over time, you know, we're expecting somewhere mid to late 20s, maybe early 2030s that we'll hit peak oil demand. Does that give us the opportunity to transition uh, oil and maybe even natural gas pipelines over to hydrogen? Good question. I'm not, this is a bit of a rabbit hole, so I'll, I'll <laughs> take your guidance so we don't drop too far down. Now, yeah, the, I think the short answer is yes, you can pipe hydrogen. The, the hydrogen is challenging because the hydrogen molecule is much smaller than the natural gas molecule. So you will have challenges with leakages potentially of hydrogen. So the pipeline basically needs to be tighter and, and uh, built a little bit differently. And you, and, and the second thing is that hydrogen can lead to corrosion in a higher degree than natural gas. And then there are probably more issues that uh, I don't know of. But, but bottom line is uh, you can't directly repurpose natural gas pipelines. Um, and the marginal investment to repurpose depends a little bit on when and where the pipeline was built. Now, in, for example, if you compare US with Europe, the requirements of natural gas pipelines in terms of quality of steel and some of the some other aspects is higher in Europe. So the repurposing cost, if you like, is smaller. Um, but yes, you could theoretically repurpose pipelines. Um, final question, uh, Thomas. Uh, is there an opportunity over uh, you know, the next 10, 20, 30 years to transition away from the fossil fuels, particularly natural gas, and do a lot of what we do with natural gas now and do it with hydrogen? Again, in theory, yes. I think the challenges are more practical in terms of ramp up times and, and deployment of capital. And indeed, you, know, you raise the, trans the distribution issue is, is significant. I think that's where we're gonna see, um, we'll see central or, or sort of clustered uses of hydrogen uh, with a separate supply chain potentially than the, the, the rural uses, if you like, of hydrogen or the distributed fueling stations for trucks. They might actually be using a smaller electrolysis plant with a, a local solar farm rather than a, a centralized system with an expensive pipeline to distribute. And all those details of how it will shake out obviously are, are, are not yet uh, fully understood. Thomas, thank you very much for this. And you and I are gonna have separate interviews on hydrogen in, for heavy industry and hydrogen for long haul trucking and heavy, uh, heavy trucking issues. So thank you very much. And readers who wanna watch those, uh, those interviews can do so on our YouTube channel. Sounds great, thank you.